Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMDF, the GFS and ECMDF ensembles and we'll finish up a look at the 5 day precipitation temperature and also weather warnings as we do have a yellow warning for wind across the north. Now we've had very uh, much mundane weather over the last few weeks with a lot of high pressure around and it is very quickly changing over the next few days. A lot more low pressure, especially further northwards. High pressure hanging on in the south, but low pressure definitely returning in the north. Uh, it does look like, longer term, we could be going quite stormy. Now, in yesterday's video, we were looking at the potential for a bit of a Scandinavian high with blocking over the northern hemisphere, and the models are starting to sort of move away from that solution, keeping blocking over the pole and to the other side of the pole, forcing a lot of low pressure and the very cold air towards Greenland, northern Canada, fueling low pressure towards the UK. Some of these runs looking very, very stormy indeed. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Also do check out channel membership, of course, uh, that is in the description as well. Now if we do run through the latest GFS, you can see low pressure is pushing to the north at the moment. And when we've got that squeeze of ice of ours, we're going to be seeing very strong winds. That's why we have a yellow warning for wind tonight into tomorrow. High pressure still in the south, but low pressure definitely pushing into northwards uh, and further northwards. And we're seeing quite cold air um, sort of move southwards as well with some wintry showers. But generally most areas just some rain and cloud. High pressure still holding on in the south, but it's really as we head towards next week where low pressure really starts to take over. You can see the high pressure really does get pushed away and we see a lot of weather fronts push through. And as we head towards day 10, you see again high pressure trying to push in from the south. But for many northern areas, still under very stormy conditions. And you can see right till 384 hours, a pretty much um, big tropospheric polar vortex centered over Iceland. Very, very stormy pattern. You have a look at those 850 HP temperatures. Bitterly cold air over Greenland and northern Canada. And this would be fueling storms. It could be pretty chilly as well with a lot of polar maritime air mass. Like really cold air slipping into the North Atlantic. But where this boundary along the minus 5 to 0 line, along there with the jet stream, picks up moisture, we will be seeing um, a big, uh, big low pressure systems develop, essentially spin up very, very quickly. Again, it's in the longer term, so it's not guaranteed to happen, but um, it's something we are seeing quite a, quite a lot on some of these runs. Now, some people will be saying, where's the blocking gone that we were looking at over the last few days? And you can see over the North Pole is the other side towards Russia, Alaska, seeing a lot of blocking, and all the blues and purples centered just to our north. And what this means is America is going to go pretty cold as well uh, for a time, um, at least uh, this week into next week, you see you can see a big nor'easter spinning up towards northeast um, parts of America into Canada. And that's going to produce copious amounts of snow, but of course it's going to bring energy into the jet stream as well. So cold plunges into central and eastern parts of America, and turning things very unsettled. Cold but mild um, periods as well towards the UK are looking very very unsettled indeed. Now if we do have a look at the EGM run, see how that does compare, this is the midnight run and you can see again high pressure in the south, low pressure in the north, seeing a bit of cold plunges here or there over the next week, we're still seeing that cold rare mass through ne uh, come through next week, frost returning quite widely and uh, we could be seeing some wintry showers in the north but it's not looking amazingly cold and you can see right towards day 10 those purples starting to migrate towards the north atlantic quite cold northwesterly winds uh, with some cold rare masses here or there but nothing too crazy and once again if we have a look at the northern hemisphere you can see that blocking appearing on the other side of the pole shifting all the purples the tropospheric polar vortex to the to, towards greenland northern canada towards svalbard iceland and that's going to be very unsettled conditions powered up jet stream but as well it will uh, sort of push colder air towards the UK. Won't be massively snowy by any means, but it could be quite snow over northern hills um, as we will have quite cold air masses around. Uh, but it doesn't look like it will be widespread cold, which I know a lot of people are looking for. Now, if we do have a look at the East Blue F run, which yesterday was showing a Scandinavian high, but unfortunately today that's sort of come out of the model output. It can go, it can come out as quickly as it can go in. So um, we may see. Scandinavian high come back, but just in the latest runs, it is not appearing. We're seeing this more westerly tropospheric polar vortex theme. You can see next week seeing quite cold plunges at times, a bit of a northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream as we see these big, vigorous low pressure systems come out of America. See that big temperature gradient from 10 degrees at 800 HPA all the way down to minus 20 degrees, and that's fueling these low pressure systems. 
heading towards the UK. We will be on the cold side of the jet stream. You can see that is it's heading towards sort of France, uh, northern Spain um, on this ECMDF run. So it would be quite chilly, unsettled, and could be wintry over northern hills. Once again, if we have a look at the 850, uh, so we have to have a look at the pressure charts. You can see the blocking towards the other side of the pole, pushing these blues and purples towards the UK. Not as organised as the other two runs we're showing, but still towards our side of the pole, which will turn things really quite stormy and unsettled one thing to note though if we did see blocking start to appear our side of the pole we have all the cold air here so we would we could quickly go very cold if we did see sufficient blocking but at this stage the blocking looks like it's definitely going to be appearing over the top of the pole and towards the other side but nothing in the latest runs hinting for our side of the pole now if we do have a look at the ecmwf ensembles which is very good at showing these patterns and if we go out to day seven you can see generally a westerly flow some more northwesterly, some more of a southwesterly, but all gently westerlies. Um, again, slightly different orientation can change the exact air mass, can turn things a little bit colder. But regardless if it's northwesterly or southwesterly, it's not going to be bitterly cold. Northwesterly might be around average to slightly below average. Southwesterly is more likely to be average to above average. So nothing too crazy. Now, if we head out to day 10, you can see the control operational, including 25 others, have real unsettled conditions. The purple is just to the north of the UK, potentially spinning up some deep lows. Again, air originating out of um, Greenland, but it's not blocking um, that's causing this. It is just an amplification of the jet stream, strong low pressure system, so generally it's not going to be that cold. Some wintriness in the north, but nothing too crazy. You see the other two runs, all the other two scenarios, showing something very similar. But once again, not showing these lows divers far southwards, so potentially a little bit milder with those. But control operational one going for this really unsettled, chilly outlook. If we go beyond that, two, three hundred hours, you can see again, some of these runs try to build up that Scandinavian high, but they are in the minority. Most are just having uh, low pressure over into the north of the UK oscillating between high pressure, low pressure. And we can see that very similar if we go to 360 hours where you can see some of the runs showing high pressure over the top of the UK, but quickly will show low pressure running back in. Others showing low pressure over the top of the UK. And you can see just a few runs are trying to build a Scandinavian high. Some more blocking further northwards. But you see these blues firmly rooted over Greenland, Iceland, northern Canada. They're not going to be letting this blocking build particularly easily. And it does look like generally things may be really unsettled over the next few weeks. Not looking great if you're looking for real sustained cold. We will, of course, see polar maritime air masses. We will see chilly weather in from the northwest, especially over northern hills. But we've seen that already this winter. It hasn't produced anything massive. Um, so it doesn't look that encouraging if you're a cold weather lover. This may be one of those winters where we see our coldest weather towards the end of February, March, uh, or even April time. It does look like the next week or two doesn't look like anything amazingly cold is on the horizon simply because the tropospheric polar vortex over northern canada and greenland is too just too strong for any of this blocking that is trying to appear in the model output it's just just too strong flattening it it's out now if we do have a look at the gfs ensembles which shows the air mass as well you can see we do see cold air mass at times uh, and generally temperatures over the next couple of weeks are going to be around average so at the moment it's quite uh, quite mild but towards the surface it's still pretty chilly especially further southwards we see that cold air mass moving through the last couple of days of the month and starts of february not quite as cold as it was showing a couple of days ago but still getting down to potentially minus five at 850 hpa but it's obviously another mild sector move through and then potentially around the 5th of february another colder sector move through again not particularly resolved uh, some staying around or above average some going very much below average so there is a bit of a trend for some cold weather towards the start of february but it doesn't look anything too sustained you can see the operation run is a bit of an, a milder outlier with uh, it being right in the mild end of, of the runs but it's nothing too crazy out um from the average of the ensembles and you can just see generally things are unsettled temperatures up uh, 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 up above average and also below average at times not looking particularly encouraging for any major cold and again if we have a look at glasgow um you can see again very similar up and down over the next couple of weeks cold rain masses at times mild rain masses as well a lot more precipitation further northwards where we're closer to those center of the highs there could be some snow as well you can see quite a lot of, uh, of snow depth spikes but it's not going to be sustained it will be a lot of wintry showers back edge weather fronts or leading uh leading snow events well on the leading edge of a weather front 
So it's not going to be massive sustained uh, cold weather by any means, but it does look like there will be snow returning further northwards and westwards as well with polar maritime air masses. Look at the two meter temperatures, you can see really up and down. Some days 10 degrees, other days 3 or 4 degrees. And again, that would be similar for London. Some days 10, 11 degrees, other days 5, 6 degrees below average. So looking at quite a lot up and down over the next couple uh, of weeks. And again, sea level pressure generally higher pressure for london but we could be seeing those lows return and be quite stormy as well if we do get those lows pushing southwards but again that is not something we're seeing on all the models just what we're seeing on some of the models in the longer term but definitely further northwards if we have a look at glasgow is it going really quite unsettled with a lot of low pressure especially towards the start of february again all depends on where the center of the low is but regardless of the center of low stays um, towards uh, Iceland, even if we saw a little spin up of a low pressure system, it could be really quite vigorous uh, and unsettled. So, not looking great if you're uh, if you either uh, either enjoy snowy weather, cold weather, or just the settled weather we've had recently. It does look it's going to be going quite wet and windy, especially further northwards, and generally quite unsettled. Now, if we do have a look at the five day precipitation and temperature, you'll be able to see that we are now getting. Um, we are now getting a lot um, of the precipitation now into the short term um, on this run. Now, if we do run for easy weather front, potentially moving through tomorrow, a bit of rain along it, but generally just cloud, especially further eastwards. And then a few wintry showers across the north, before things turn a bit more bright for Thursday afternoon. And then we see cloud move in once again. For Friday and another weather front pushing to the north, potentially bringing heavier rain for a time. Before we see more weather fronts move through again through the weekend through sunday again potentially a bit of wintriness through the northern hills but nothing too crazy you can see quite a vigorous low pressure system there but it is positioned further northwards that's where most of the, the heavy rain and wind will be in the north now if we do have a look at the max temperatures you can see today it was around average seven eight degrees nothing too cold nothing too mild overnight tonight potentially some cooler conditions further north it's maybe around freezing but many areas staying well above freezing tomorrow afternoon temperatures are going to rise a little bit 10 11 degrees a bit milder than today especially further southwards overnight friday could be seeing a, another frost again depends on where cloud amounts remain high where we see clear skies will be a frost around and friday afternoon widely eight to ten degrees so slightly above average and of course across scotland maybe only four or five degrees if we find a night saturday really mild in the south 10 11 but much colder in the north and again you can see these oscillating up and down temperatures um through out the next couple of days we get we can see some more frost on the weekend but they'll only last a day or two before we see milder air move back in gonna be a lot of up and down over the next few days some days as i said could be 10 11 degrees other days could be three or four degrees um so it's looking very very unsettled potentially stormy and very up and down in terms of temperatures now if we do finally have a look at the weather warnings have a look at wind you can see only across the far northwest uh, northeast of scotland sorry very strong winds may cause some disruption during Wednesday night. So 10 p.m. tonight until 2, 2 a.m. tomorrow. It's only a four-hour warning, so not particularly significant, but of course I want to cover it if anyone is there. Again, brief spell of very strong winds will affect Kenneth Ness, Orkney and Fair Isle late on Wednesday evening. West or southwesterly winds will gust to 65 miles per hour at times, potentially 75 miles an hour along exposed coast. The strongest of the winds will quickly move their way eastwards during the early hours of Thursday, high likelihood, lower impact. Again, could be significant for some, but again, over the, in the middle of the night. So I suspect many people um, will just not know about it at all. Um, so yeah, could be some impacts from that. Uh, but I do suspect we'll be seeing more wind warnings and potentially more rain warnings and maybe even some snow warnings, especially over Scottish Highlands over the next week or two, as much more unsettled conditions return and potentially even a little bit stormy towards February. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.